Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the second video in the problem solving lectures of this dynamic programming playlist where we are solving 16 CSES dynamic programming problems. Now in case this is the very first video of this entire playlist that you're watching, I would highly recommend you to start this playlist from the very first video where we've actually discussed the concepts and the mindset that is required to solve all of these dynamic programming problems. So in this video, we are going to be discussing this problem, minimizing coins. So let's first of all, try to read the problem statement very, very clearly. So it is written that uh, consider a money system consisting of N coins. Each coin has a positive integer value. Your task is to produce a sum of money X using the available coins in such a way so that the number of coins that you have used is minimal. All right. For example, if the coins are one, five, seven and the desired sum is 11, then an optimal way to construct this 11 is by saying that you use five, five and one. Okay. This adds up to 11. So essentially in this entire problem, we want to construct some X and we want to minimize the number of coins that are being used and we're free to use a coin multiple times. All right. So let's look at the constraints here. N is the number of uh, coins that has been given to us, which is going up till hundred. And they've told us that all these values of the coins are distinct. So every single coin has a distinct uh, integer value. Next, they've told us that this integer X, the sum that we want to construct is going from one to 10 to the power six. All right. And all of these uh, coin values can also go from one to 10 to the power six. Again, we will be solving this problem with the same mindset. Given a very big problem, we'll try to reduce it down into smaller problems and then solve these smaller problems and then somehow get a relation between these smaller problems to get the answer for the bigger sub problem. All right. So let's look at it like this. You want to construct a sum X, right? And you have these coins available C1, C2, C3, so on up till CN, right? So if you look at this X, you want to construct X. All right. Let's suppose, you know, you use this coin C1. So what will happen to X? If you use the coin C1, you would require X minus C1 to be constructed. Similarly, if you would have used the coin C2, you would have required X minus C2 to be constructed and so on, right? So if you look at it, you know, all these that we're talking about are nothing but smaller sub problems compared to X. Let's suppose you wanted to construct a sum of 11, like in the first case, and you had these coins one, five and seven. How can you construct a sum of 11 by let's suppose using coin one, then if you use coin one, you would have had to construct 10, right? If you would have used coin five, you would have had to construct six. Then if you would have used the coin seven, you would have had to construct four. Got it. And similarly, these problems that you are coming up with now, 10, six and four, these are smaller sub problems that you want to solve, uh, you know, in order to get the answer for 11. Got it. Now, similarly, look at 10. How can you get 10? You can get 10 by again, choosing the coin, whichever you want. Let's suppose you decide to use coin uh, one. So you will have to get nine. Now, if you would have used coin five, you would have had to get five. If you use the coin uh, seven, you would have had to get three. Got it. Now, similarly, look at six. If you look at six, again, there are three choices of choosing the coins. One of them is, let's suppose you choose coin one. So you would have had to construct what? You would have had to construct five. If you choose the coin five, you would have had to construct one. If you choose the coin seven, can you actually choose coin seven? No, because that would mean that you want to construct the sum of minus one and that is not allowed. Okay. So this clearly shows us that if we want to construct a sum of X, we cannot be using a coin which has a value higher than X. Got it. So here, this case is not allowed, right? Now understand it like this again, we are breaking the problem into smaller sub problems going down. And then eventually we will hit a point where we don't need to further divide the sub problem, right? What would that point be? Can I say when you hit a point as zero, are you going to require any coins to construct zero? No. So I know the answer for zero. When I want to construct a sum of zero, the answer is just zero. I don't need any more coins, right? This is one thing that you must observe. Second thing that you must observe is the concept of overlapping sub problems, right? This is exactly what we discussed. A big problem being divided into smaller problems and then these smaller problems repeating again and again. Look at this. See, we want to construct five and we also want to construct five here, but we are solving this same problem for five, two times, right? We shouldn't be solving it two times. We should be calculating the answer here and then storing it somewhere so that the next time it can be solved, right? Same mindset that we had developed. Now think about it. You have three ways essentially, or three sub problems from which you can construct 11, right? 
विच वन ऑफ दीज विल यू चूज सो लेट सपोज आई टेल यू टेन कैन बी कंस्ट्रक्टेड इन यू नो फाइव कॉइन्स सिक्स कैन बी कंस्ट्रक्टेड इन जस्ट टू कॉइन्स फोर कैन बी कंस्ट्रक्टेड इन लेट सपोज अनदर थ्री कॉइन्स विच वन आर यू गोइंग टू यूज यू आर ऑब्वियसली गोइंग टू यूज दिस पाथ नाउ दीज आर हाइपोथेटिकल नंबर्स बट जस्ट टू गिव यू एन आइडिया इफ यू हैव थ्री स्मॉलर सब प्रॉब्लम्स विच वन आर यू गोइंग टू चूज सी इन द प्रीवियस प्रॉब्लम वैन यू आर डिस्कसिंग डाइस कॉम्बिनेशन वी आर एडिंग अप ऑल दीज आंसर्स फॉर द स्मॉलर सब प्रॉब्लम्स वाई बिकॉज यू वॉन्टेड ऑल द पॉसिबल नंबर ऑफ वेज बट हियर वी वॉन्ट द बेस्ट पॉसिबल वे सो वट विल वी डू वी विल कंसिडर ओनली वन ऑफ दम राइट हाउ विल वी डिसाइड विच वन विच एवर ऑफ दम यू नो रिक्वायर्स मिनिमल नंबर ऑफ कॉइन्स दैट इज द वन वी विल चूज सो कैन आई डिफाइन माई डी पी स्टेट लाइक दिस डी पी ऑफ के इक्वल्स टू मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ कॉइन्स रिक्वायर्ड टू कंस्ट्रक्ट a sum of k can i say this yes now in order to construct k what are the possible choices that you have what are the smaller sub problems in which you can break it clearly if you want to construct k k can be broken down into k minus c1 k can be broken down into k minus c2 and so on up till k minus cn right there are n possible ways to you know basically reduce this k into a smaller value so which one of them are you going to choose each of them requires one coin this also requires one coin this also requires one coin all of them require one coin so which one are you going to choose you are going to choose the one which gives you the minimal number of coins if let's suppose this takes 5 coins this takes 4 coins this takes let's suppose 10 11 and let's suppose 100 coins you would choose this one because this is requiring the minimal number of coins got it so can i say my dp of k if i have to write a transition what will this transition be i will consider all these n possibilities i will choose the minimum of them so i will say minimum of dp of k minus ci where i goes from basically uh, let's write it like this i goes from 1 to n yes i will consider the best possibility that i have now understand it like this if it requires four coins to construct k minus c2 how many coins would be required to construct k 4 plus 1 right for all of these problems the number of coins that are required you will add one coin to it to actually get the value k so can i say minimum of k minus ci plus 1 is going to be the number of coins that are required to construct k got it now think about the minimal case which doesn't need to be further divided for which you already know the answer well that is dp of 0 because in order to construct a sum of zero how many coins do you require you require just zero coins right this is the base case so this was the state this was the transition and this is the base case now what is that final problem that we were trying to solve see here we wanted to construct this integer x right we want to find out the minimal number of coins required to construct this integer x so clearly the final sub problem is going to be what it is going to be dp of x okay so this is the main solution for this problem now before we actually look at the code it is also very important to you know analyze the time and space complexity of every single dp solution to get the time complexity for a dp problem what do you need you need the number of states and you need the average transition time per state right how many states do we have here how many sub problems are we talking about we are talking about dp of 0 1 2 so on up till x so number of states are going to be order of x right what is the average transition time per state look at this formula dp of k is equal to the minimum of dp of k minus ci where i goes from 1 to n so i will have to try out n possibilities right in order to get my dp of k it depends on n smaller sub problems so essentially the transition time per state is going to be order of n so the final time complexity is going to be order of n times x yes what about the space complexity see space complexity is determined by the number of states and here we have order of x states so the space complexity is order of x okay 
Now, one very important thing that we have to understand here is that this was just one possible way in which we solved this problem, right? You could come up with a lot of different states, but at the end of the day, it is very, very important to define what is the meaning of your state. Once you define the meaning of your state, your transition is going to follow automatically. Your base case is going to follow automatically. Similar is the case for final sub problem. But if you don't define the state properly, you yourself are going to get confused. Did you look at the last problem that we discussed, the dice combinations one? We had two, you know, different states. And I clearly wrote the meaning of both of those states. Because even though both of those states looked the same, dp of k, both of them were same. But their meaning was entirely different. So the transitions were coming out to be entirely different, right? So whenever you're solving a dp problem, just write down the meaning of your state. And this will help you to, you know, stay focused and not get confused in the entire solution. Fine. So let's look at the solution for this problem now. So what I'm doing here is that, you know, uh, I'm defining my coins array as A. Uh, first, I'm taking the uh, input N and X. Then I'm defining my DP, uh, you know, vector, where DPI means minimum coins to generate a sum of I. Okay. And what I'm doing here is that, you know, I'm defining my DP uh, array with a very high value initially. For every single value X, I am saying right now it is not possible to construct that. So for that, I've just said that it requires 1e9, which is 10 to the power 9 coins to construct it, which is a pretty high number and it will never be actually required to uh, use 10 to the power 9 coins, right? So this is one way to, you know, handle problems where you have to find out the minimum answer. Just store a very big value in the DP vector so that it just means that so far the answer hasn't been calculated. Got it? So this is the base case that we discussed. The number of coins required to construct the sum of 0 is 0. Next, what are we doing here? See. I am iterating from 1 to x. Why am I iterating from 1 to x and not from x to 1? See, I told you that dp of x is dependent on what? Is dependent on dp of x minus ci. It just clearly means in order to calculate dp of x, it depends on the previous values. Those previous values should have an answer for you to get an answer for dp of x. So that is why we need to first of all calculate the answer for smaller values and then we'll be able to calculate the answer for bigger values. So I'm iterating from 1 to x and here I'm trying to find out find dp of x. Got it? How am I finding out dp of x? I am considering all the n sub problems into which dp of x can be divided. So I'm saying iterate from 0 to n which is the coins and I am saying if the value of the coin at the jth index is less than or equal to i that I want to construct in that case only consider that as a valid sub problem and just say dp of i is equal to minimum of dp of i comma dp of i minus a j i minus the value of the coin and overall i'm adding a plus one because i'm using this jth coin here got it this is the transition if you talk about the time complexity this is going till order of x this is going till order of n right final time complexity comes out to be order of n into x and eventually what are we doing see we wanted to find out dp of x right the num minimal number of coins required to construct a sum of x so I just said that, okay, if it is not containing 10 to the power 9, it means I would have found out at least one possible way to construct X. If yes, print DP of X, which is the minimal number of coins required to get X. Otherwise print a minus one. Why minus one? Because it is not possible to get that sum. So yes, that is the solution for this problem, guys. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the series so far. And I hope your mindset of solving the DP problems is becoming better now. You are not thinking about recursive, iterative, memoization, all of these things, but you're thinking in terms of problems, sub problems, and you know, uh, relations between these sub problems. Now, in case you're enjoying the series, uh, don't forget to press the bell icon and also subscribe to this channel uh, in order to not miss any future updates on the series. Apart from that, be sure to comment understood in the comment section in case you were able to understand the solution of this particular problem. And in case you have any doubts, feel free to comment them down and I will see you in the next video.